Okay. Uh, hello, software architecture lovers. Uh, today we have a special day. Uh, today we have Andro Andrea Magnarski with us, uh, one of GSES speakers. Uh, and today in this um, uh, short uh, video interview, she will uh, share with us her expertise, um, her uh, main software architecture insights, uh, and um, yeah, she will share um, key um, maybe facts and key findings um, uh, over her experience because she has uh, done a lot of projects uh, and uh, she's very famous in software architecture world. And it's just an honor for us to, to have this opportunity uh, to speak with her, not only during GSAS um, uh, session uh, offline, but also have this more informal um, interview and uh, yeah, just gain um, more knowledge uh, from her. So Andrea, thank you very much for finding uh, time uh, for this initiative. Um, I very appreciate it. Uh, and yeah, feel free to briefly introduce uh, yourself uh, and your company, Mimic Orbit. For sure. So yes, I am Andrea Magnorski and I am a programmer and a consultant uh, in software architecture and functional programming, which is a strange but uh, necessary niche and uh, it's quite enjoyable here. So um, I, I've been over the last few years finding that I, a lot of teams struggle with kind of lining up when it comes to what they're, they're actually building. And sometimes it's very hard to realize that that's something you need to do deliberately. Um, and it's also sometimes really hard to, how to make that happen without investing in massive uh, kind of initiatives that all last over many, many times. Maybe your problem is not that big, but that doesn't mean that you don't need some tools to deal with that. So a lot of what, what, what I try to do is about that. And that paired with uh, my kind of background as a functional programmer, and uh, that means that the type of projects I wind up working in come from a place of um, certain ideas about how to write programs that are might be slightly different to what other, you know, um, types of programming techniques might be. You know, it's just, you need to think slightly differently to build functional systems. And so it's good to have someone that has that background when it comes to architecture, if your system is built that way. Sure. And um, what can you say about Global Software Architecture Summit this year? How do you find lineup of speakers? I'm sure you know uh, some of them for sure, because you also participate in, in other conferences, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Very exciting. Uh, very exciting. It's it's great to see a lineup of a bunch of people I, I know and that I already know that it's a great learning opportunity, but also a bunch of people that I either didn't know or, or that I did know, but I haven't met personally. And so I'm, it's a, it's a great combo of, um, seeing, uh, kind of more, uh, well-known names and also other names that I'm like, oh, what's going to happen there? So I think it's going to be really, really interesting. Uh, and also looking forward to seeing some friends. So, and especially in Barcelona, which is a lovely city. Have you been uh, to Barcelona before or the I, be your I have been many years ago in 2004 <laughs> uh, and uh, so I'm sure it's changed quite a bit since so I'm we looking forward to life. reacquaint myself with the city yeah you will love it definitely and October is a perfect month to to visit the city uh, actually, uh, yeah, this edition, um, I'm always excited about the upcoming editions, but um, this edition, I feel like it's very special because also uh, there are several speakers, um, and I think you know Diana Montalian probably. Yes. yes. Uh, so uh, it was very, um, very nice to hear that she will give a workshop uh, re uh, regarding the topic. Uh, and this topic uh, is featured in her book that is um, that is coming out uh, in the um, uh, in the upcoming weeks uh, or maybe months uh, or two. 
uh, and so also Jack Reed, um, I think she she's uh, from UK. Also, she is writing a book. Uh, and uh, first, she will talk about this um, topic in GSAS. So it will be like uh, a lot of uh, talks and workshops uh, that haven't uh, been covered yet. Uh, and um, that's nice. Um, also, we wanted to to make this addition uh, not that oriented or on hard skills, al although hard or hard skills is very important. But also, um, it's it, past three years been hard years, right? And a lot of people were facing burnout and stuff like this. So, also covering this topic on how, with all the tools out there and all the uh, methodologies out there and all those yeah right like practices out there how we can actually focus and make our life more enjoyable uh, I mean, well the thing like, that you, you touch on something really important that i think as an industry we're not very good at uh which is this this idea that soft skills because you know it's like they're lesser important or something i think as an as an industry we've been um unfortunate in, in in our focus i think if you see my background i i can and i'm sure that if someone is interesting you can interested mm -hmm. you can check on the internet but i i always kind of listen to this thing of the hard skills are really really important and soft skills maybe for managers or some other people uh, I, I, that was my mental model before and uh, i think it's been quite damaging because <laughs> what i found the most is that most projects that fail don't fail out of uh, lack of skills, or some of some of them suffer from that. But a lot of them that fail hardest are the ones that didn't have clear shared system ideas. As in, people were not aligned into what they were building. And this is why I'm so passionate about uh, mm -hmm. architecture sessions, which is well, it's obviously something that I came up with. But uh, but I'm also interested in that all of us as an industry pay attention to because. Um, it is more important to build the right thing wrong than the wrong thing right. Mm. As Ross Lakoff said, I, I wasn't, I was, I didn't, I didn't come up with that just now. But um, it's, it's a really important thing. If we kind of rely on that a bit more and kind of start thinking about what are we building, and why, and and that that's a really good place to be than the other way around. Yeah, yeah, good point. Hmm. And um, uh, following your um, idea, so maybe you can share with us some other key software architecture insights. Um, so regarding soft skills, hard skills, or software architecture in general. So what was uh, the main topics uh, or practices uh, that were kind of eye-opening and you said oh, well this is this is really game-changing uh things mm, that's that's kind of interesting i think i think something that's been really um in my mind of like this not so much about one particular idea but about how like how do we keep learning from all these things that happen in as you're building a system. So mm -hmm. uh, I think a great uh, way to kind of guide yourself through the maze, the, the chaos that tends to be uh, trying to make sense of a system is, uh, well, the all the stuff that uh, Ruth Malan is doing. Uh, if you follow her on Mastodon, you can say, you can see that she is um, really querying how we learn She's really trying to say, hey, look at this really nice, interesting thing. And it, you can really reflect on that and take away to, sometimes tools, sometimes ideas. Uh, mm. Another good uh, person to kind of follow and learn from is uh, Nick Tune. He just, uh, mm -hmm. I think he finished the book now on um, modernizing architecture. And uh, yeah. I think it's a great guide. I think a lot of people in the industry are lacking some sort of how do I even start with this? Uh, or, or, or I'm knee deep in tech bed. Uh, how do I deal with all of this? And I have no help. And uh, 
I'm supposed to know this already, but I don't know why. I think that's that's the mental model of a lot of people that need to kind of get into these resources. Um, some of them assume that it's supposed to be painful. And it really isn't. It, it's, it can't be better. So now is the time to explore tools and try to make it better. Perfection is never like something that you reach, but you can strive to be like less uh, in a des desperation state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, coming back to the um, uh, GSCS 20th edition, uh, so the topic, modern practices in software architecture, how to be more effective, efficient, and enjoy what you do. So what else, a pro, a, apart from the topic that you will discuss uh, during your talk, would you like to mention? Um, I think you mentioned that already. I think Diana's uh, topic is quite interesting and that it might, it could be something that people would want to do, especially the workshop. Um I don't know Jackie, and I'm curious about her. Um, I am also curious about uh, Amar, Amal. I don't know what mm -hmm. she speaks. Can we talk about it? And also, I'm quite interested in what Owen Owen Woods uh, would could be bringing to the table, um, since it seems like he's been quite active in writing books, and writing books is hard. So. Um, Hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm curious about what is it that he's going to share with us in the in the conference. Okay, and uh, you, Andrea, are you about uh, to start writing your first book? Uh, or I, I don't have plans to do that. Uh, I had a couple of people asking this already, which is very strange. Uh, but um, I think I collaborated with in Nick Dune's book, and uh, I I added a little bit of a use case. Uh, um, yeah, a, a use case on how to use bite-sized architecture sessions in um, when you're trying to collaborate between teams. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there's more to be written about there. I think for now, the the best place to find my written um, escapades would be to visit uh, bitesizearchitecturesessions.com, which is <laughs> probably, that that's probably enough. But I would like to grow that to be more of a community driven mm -hmm. site, not basically led by me probably, but that other people can contribute what they learn themselves sure. so that the tool can have its own life, uh, kind of independent of what I do. Okay, nice. Um, actually, like I'm asking because um, I know a lot of uh, very talented software architects and they say, oof, writing the whole book is like a lot of um, time. Uh, effort and probably like not now, uh, but I I don't know if you know that um, last year we published book uh, software architecture metrics. So it was like book um, uh, co-authored by ten software architects, and it was uh, actually manageable because um, uh, each chapter was written by a different author. It was uh, actually a great initiative. We received a lot of uh, good uh, feedback. It was based on on last year's uh, edition, so it was about software architecture metrics. We want to see how this edition will go, but uh, if we see a lot of uh, interest and a lot of interesting material, maybe uh, what we can do is uh, also write another book uh, based on, uh, yeah, modern practices in software architecture. And uh, if you would be interested, it would be an honor for us uh, to have you as a co-author. Uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds sounds so. super interesting. It, it, I would love to learn more about what the book, is, like, you know, more details. Like, uh, what is the target audience? Uh, what is it that the book? It could be that you know you decide to do something that I'm just not the right fit. But but if it's something that's that is aligned with um, what I'm doing when it comes to basically understanding how to how to basically and have a shared view of what the systems we're working on are then mm -hmm. that that's definitely something that I'm interested in I think people um when you I think when we write stuff down uh, it's a different lens into um whatever topic we're discussing than when you talk when you talk things are 
a little bit more fluid and chaotic, mm. uh, maybe, mm. or, or or sometimes if it's a little bit more um, deliberate, like a presentation where you practice and you know that what is that you want to say, that's one way to share knowledge. This conversation is, you know, meandering into new avenues sometimes and you're like, oh, I didn't know about that. And um, I wasn't planning on saying this. And that's okay. I think the book thing just gives you another lens or, or like when you try to write something down into a format that will just, you finish in some way. That, mm -hmm. that can be quite interesting. But again, there's a lot of effort and the, you know, it's like you always need to balance uh, yeah. rewards and risks. And I don't want to overcommit. You know, that's like if you commit to 10 things and you don't deliver, that's very disappointing to everyone, including yourself. Of course, of course. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's talk about. Uh, well, let's talk after after the edition. Uh, maybe you will feel like inspired and motivated, and yeah. we'll create a very valuable content together. <laughs> okay, Andrea. Uh, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you. Uh, as I told you, uh, it will be very nice to meet you in person and spend uh, three years. Uh, three years. Three days. Three days. <laughs> Three years ago, we'll like, wow, what this conference got really long. <laughs> and uh, yeah, see you in October. Um, and good luck with all your initiatives. You're doing great. And uh, it's very important uh, and very nice to see more women in software architecture uh, area. Uh, and uh, thank you for everything that you do for the industry. Oh, thank you. Thank you for organizing, which is a lot of work. So kudos to you and looking forward to meet you in person as well. Sure. Okay. See you. All right. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.